Hi folks, it's just a short video looking at uh, a group head service on the uh, Euro Piccolo. Um, so I've put this up here because uh, somebody had asked and, and I thought I'd just go through the process. So um, very quickly on tools that you'll need to do this, um, 14 mil spanner, and if you've got two of those, that's even better because they're going to use those for the um, top nuts on here. Uh, some kind of food safe um, lubricant, so uh, Monaco 111 is, is obviously recommended quite a lot. Um, and unless you want to get really fiddly with some cocktail sticks um, or, or something else, a pair of circlip, um, a circlip tool like this is really useful. So it's got um, a thing to remove the circlip from inside um, the group head there. Uh, and then obviously I've got my replacement gaskets, which for me just came from the espresso shop, but you can get them all sorts of places. Um, so they're different depending on the year and the model that you've got. So just make sure you've got the right one. This is a 98 pre-millennium model. Um, so we've got the round uh, gasket here. And then obviously the piston gaskets, uh, the one that goes up in the top uh, there. And then um, a gasket to connect the um, group head to the boiler. Um, I've got two of those because I've also got um, the bong isolator on here as well. Um, so slightly different to yours, I would imagine. Oh, and you will also need uh, a spanner for this one, uh, if you want to take it off. Which you don't have to do, but let's just check from memory. Yeah, there we are. So you get away with a 10 mil spanner on that one. Um, for removing those bolts. So, 10 mil spanner as well. Okay. Right, so first thing I'm going to do with this is probably just, I'm going to lift the lever just to empty out the, the siphon tube, make sure that's completely empty. I've emptied the boiler already. Now, uh, you, you could obviously do this and just do the group head. I quite like taking the whole group head off um, because I think it just makes it a bit easier to work with. Um, and I've got to change those uh, gaskets anyway. Although I don't think they get terribly worn. But if you're doing this as a routine service, that's probably what I'd do. So just loosening the bolts on the group head here. They're not particularly tight, uh, so I just like to give a little bit of support to the group head as it comes off. Like that. And after a few seconds, those bolts will become loose. Uh, your bolts will probably be shorter than mine because, again, I've got this isolator on, so they are um, longer just to accommodate that isolator modifier on here. So when you take this off, you find the whole group head comes away. Let's put those bolts to one side. Like that. There we are. And what you'll get is this will come away um, along with the siphon tube, which will come out. As you can see, I've actually had this off quite recently, so the, the gaskets are not in bad condition at all. So now I've got the whole group head off, what we can do is just put the boiler um, unit just back out of the way a little bit because um, we're not going to need that for the time being. Just move it back up there uh, and we'll focus on this here. Okay, so several things you might want to do at this point. Um, I've already uh, descaled the entire inside of this, um, so this has already been descaled. Um, I'm just going to take the isolator mod off so now it'll look like yours will look if you don't have an isolator. I'll just put that to one side and deal with that separately. Uh, and the first thing I'm probably going to do is just take out the uh, existing gasket. So uh, you could do this by hand if, if you're um, dexterous enough to do that. Uh, something, I can't remember who, who I found this out from, might have been from an Orphan Espresso video. But if you find the gasket it's tricky to get out, a nice little tip is just to get a piece of kitchen roll like this, just screwed up into a little bit of a ball and you can kind of push at the gasket with the kitchen roll and it kind of sticks and lifts the gasket up and just allows you to pull it out, which I think is um, yeah, a nice, easy way to get it out. This one isn't going to play, um, but I can get my nail in there. And if you can't get your nail in there, um, just a little, um, a little cocktail stick or something will help lever those out. So actually that one, if I hold it up, it's not really in too bad a uh, condition, but at 30p, um, I'll, I'll probably change it anyway. Uh, just so we're keeping the machine running smoothly. So then we've got the group head um, here now with that removed. Um, and obviously, if you um, haven't got an isolator, your um, siphon tube will be um, going into the middle of this rather than um, separately as well. Okay, the next thing we're probably going to do at this point is um, remove uh, the lever. Again, I could have done that when it was on the machine. 
um, either way around really. Uh, yours, if you haven't replaced these, um, will probably be uh, two um, rods going through and just a, a clip on either side. I've replaced them with screw-on ones, um, just because it makes this process a little bit easier. Um, and we don't have to fiddle around with clips, but it works exactly the same way. So just take those out. I think it's always worth just giving the lever a bit of a grease as well at the same time. So again, we don't have to remove the lever at this point. We could just do the gaskets. I think we may as well while we've got the whole thing apart. Take those out. So these, in this case, just unscrew. And we'll pop those to one side. And then we just have to pop um, bolts out of here. So first one normally comes out quite easily. And again, it's a little bit of encouragement. Nail or um, sometimes just a cocktail stick is quite handy to do that with. There we go. Let's turn that one out as well. You can see that they get quite, quite grubby. So we'll give those a little clean down before we put them back in and re-grease them. And then your lever should just um, slide off. And then just remembering when it goes back on that it should have the um, the holes should be lined up so that they kind of go a slope upwards from the from the um, handle end towards there. So let's put that back. Right, and then we usually get quite a lot of water dripping out at this point. So make sure you've got a towel handy. Will be less messy than me and do it over the sink, which is probably what I'd do if I wasn't doing this video. So we've got our um, roller nut that's just fallen out there as well. Pop that to one side too. So now we've got our group head off uh, like that. And what we're going to try and do is get in here to get these gaskets out. Um, so the next thing I'm really going to do with this is I want to get the um, piston shaft uh, out. So we're going to take these um, retaining nuts off. We're going to push down and we're basically going to push out um, the shower screen down here so it's been removed uh, and this is the one where if you look on some of the online videos the first one I found when I first got the microphone um, suggested uh, hitting it with a mallet while, while it was still attached to the machine and can I highly recommend as, as many members of the Facebook group did to me that you do not do that um, because it's <laughs> been an absolute disaster um, so yeah yeah definitely don't do that um, at all and of course what I've just realized here is taking the lever off first uh, means the whole shaft spins around. So I'm just going to pop back in one of these bolts. Okay, just want to stop that twisting while we do this and while we take off this top. So using a 14mm spanner, just to remove that top uh, cap nut, put that off to one side, and then we should just be able to unscrew the bottom retaining nut like that. Take that to one side, and then we can remove the lever. That's it. Put that to one side as well. Right, next step, um, we basically want to push this piston shaft all the way through so you can see it um, moves up and down within there uh, and we're just going to push it through and push out that shower screen. Uh, so this is the way I found that I, I quite like to do it, which is just to hold it upside down like this. I'm putting a little bit of firm pressure on either side. There we are, you something softish underneath that's damaged the top. I'm really just pushing fairly firmly down on it and it just pops up through um, like that. Uh, and that's the shower screen off and you can see it actually this is not too bad at all. So we, uh, we probably will um, clean it out anyway, but that's not looking too bad. And part of the reason that's not looking too bad is because I use a metal um, second lower shower screen on top of the puck, so you don't tend to get too much gunk up inside. Uh, once we've done that now, we can just push that piston all the way through and just extract it here. That's it. Uh, and just let that drain out. So we've now got our two um, gaskets on here that we need to remove um, and then we've got down here a little assembly in there which we're going to remove as well and then we'll give it all a bit of a clean um, out so th there's a bit of jury out on, on cleaning for this um, because it's chrome obviously we don't want to pop it into citric acid um, equally because I've got stickers on here I don't really like submerging this although you can do um, you can submerge it in something like polycaf cleaner, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but we're probably, because that's not particularly dirty in there, um, I'm probably just going to give it a very light clean over when we do this. Uh, but the next real job is just to get these um, 
gaskets off the piston uh, here. So to do that, uh, we're going to try and do it by hand first, but I'm, I'm not hopeful that we'll be able to do that. Um, what I am going to use, therefore, is just um, a wooden stick here, which I can just use to lever up underneath and not risk hopefully damaging the, the actual piston itself too much. Okay, once you've done that, you should have. Oh, there we go. That should just pop off the bottom like that. So you can see these are, again, they're not super worn, but they, they definitely need um, a little bit of attention. So put those out of the way. So those are the usual. And then the final one, um, we've got our shower screen here. And again, all we're going to do is just push out that gasket. And again, not in horrible condition, but they're only a few pence. Do it once a year. Um, and it's just worth doing that. So again, we'll pop that in for cleaning in a moment. Right, so the next task I'm going to do is just get the um, cleaner ready uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, one more thing I'm just going to do before I um, go on to the detergent is just show you how to remove the inside of here. So if you have a look in here, you'll see we've got a circlip um, in the bottom here with two holes in it. What we're going to use, do is use these um, circlip, um, this circlip tool, basically to put it into those two holes, squeeze, remove that circlip. It is really fiddly so i'm kind of hopeful i'm going to do this first time um but these aren't the best circuit um pliers in the world um they did not cost an awful lot of money for uh, you know about three or four pounds in total so sometimes it's a bit fiddly getting it out but it's even more fiddly getting it back in um, but once you've got it, it there you go. so that's out now um so obviously hold on to that don't lose it you'll need it to put back in and once you've done that, you'll find there is a, a washer in there, which you can just take out. Um, so to be honest, you can get with your finger, um, or if you've got another pair of pliers as well. So you see the little um, brass washer in there. That is either way up, it just needs a little clean. And in the bottom, you'll find maybe a little stuck. So I might need to sort of prise that out a little. And just carefully go in there. And you'll notice, um, if you pay attention to it, that it comes out so that the um, open side is kind of facing down towards the mouth of the um, group head. So we go, take that out, put that in our little <coughs> discards, and there you go. So that's now ready um, to be cleaned along with everything else if you want to do that. Okay, in terms of cleaning, Fairly straightforward. This is a, another recommendation from the forums. Um, I've gone with Polycath Cleaner, um, which you get in an absolutely enormous tub. It is fairly expensive, but it, it lasts forever. So I would really highly recommend that. Uh, this, you just follow the directions. Really. It's 10 grams um, of Polycath Cleaner uh, and get out a litre of water, hot water it should be. And then into there, I'm gonna drop basically the chrome parts and the bits that, that get a lot of coffee on them. So we're gonna have the, um, Porter filter parts, including the basket. Um, when you put your porter filter in, just remember you want to take the handle off that and the screw out as well, um, and just pop that in then as it is. Right, so while we wait for the uh, polycaf to finish doing its job, I'm just going to reassemble um, the washers in the group head here. Um, so we're just going to go in reverse order from what we just had, really. So we're going to start um, with this gasket. Um, we want that in with just a tiny little dab of, and it really is tiny, um, just not to be on your finger, just a tiny little bit of the uh, ribbon. And we don't really want to get it in the creases inside, we just want it enough around it to slide it in and enough in it. Well, this was the advice I was given at any rate, enough in it just to let the um, shaft slide up and down inside. So I'm just going to pop that. In there and I'm just going to locate it with my finger. You can obviously use a tool to do it as well. There we are. And it just fits in with the crease side to the open side facing down towards us. Like that. So it's the first bit. The second bit's really easy. So we're just going to get the washer and drop that in on top. Same process. A little bit fiddly just to get it in place. 
Um, and then the final step is the one that takes a little bit longer, which is getting the circlip in. So it's kind of like um, a groove it's got to slot into. And then you use your circlip um, tool to squeeze it and get it into place. So we're just going to have a go at doing that now. Well, I'm sure there must be a better solution, but I don't know what it is. We'll try that again. This time. So I'm just getting it on there, it's getting a tiny bit of tension just to hold it. And then just trying to locate that inside. We haven't got very much light to work with, it's not brilliant either. There we go, and that should just go in like that. Right, one more thing while we're waiting, seeing as I've got to fit this anyway, um, I've just added a tiny bit of lubricant to that. Um, Gasket, and we're going to put that over the isolator like that, and that's just going to slot back into the uh, boiler unit. So I'll do that. There we are. Slot that back into the boiler unit like that. We'll just hold there, and then we can add on the group head separately in a moment. Just for a moment. Right, once the pudding calf uh, is finished doing its job, uh, you want to give everything a really good wash out and a rinse down. Uh, and then what I've done as well with the piston, so you can see it's cleaned it up a little bit there. Um, this is a brilliant round with a cloth as well, just to get rid of any sort of really gunky, grimy bits on there. Um, I'm not too worried. Um, if it's not perfectly clean, you can obviously spend a lot more time on it if you need to. Um, and then what we're going to do is reattach all the bits we've just taken off uh, in reverse order. So I'm going to start with um, these, which are the uh, gaskets that go on the piston and we need to have one attached on here and one attached here and those again face so they kind of face uh, they, they slope slightly outwards that way so we want the open end facing up and down um, respectively so this one's going to go on facing upwards like that with the groove in there and the other one's going to go on facing downwards with the groove down that way uh, and I'm just going to give them a little bit of um, lubrication again so See how this goes. This can be a little bit fiddly, or rather, it probably will need me to have um, both hands on that. So, I'm just going to run a tiny bit of lubrication around the sides. So, it's a little tiny amount. Just going to rub it around your fingers, and we don't want to get any in the groove particularly because it's not going to help anybody um, or the, the, um, the piston itself. So, I tend to find the bit that is a bit awkward is they sometimes just twist themselves over without you wanting them to. So you can see there, it's just kind of not quite wanting to go in. They do loosen up a little bit as you do. There we are, just trying to shove that in and get it to go into the groove properly. What I'd then probably do is just use something fairly blunt to try and turn it over to the direction you want it. But occasionally what it will do uh, is that, and you don't want it on like that at all. So you can see it's kind of opened itself up and it shouldn't have done. Um, you can, I've seen people actually manage to sort of move these around and get them back in that position to where they need to be. I've never yet managed to do that. You can actually get it in the right place, it's not too bad to get it on. It's just getting that initial bit and stopping it from flipping over, which is why I'm trying to do this and not go too hard too soon. There, so that goes in the top like that. And then, I just need to kind of slide it around without losing it, is the trick here. I'm sure there must be better ways of doing this. If anybody's got a better way of doing this, I would love to know what it is because this is a massive pain. There we go, look, it's gone on. It just needs a little bit of encouragement to go in there like that. So when it's finished, you can see that slight lip at the top there. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the bottom one. Uh, I'm not going to torture you by making you watch me do the bottom one because it's exactly the same but the other way up. Okay, and there we go. So, due to the magic of cuts, that's going to make it look like that just snapped straight on, but I've just sworn at it for the last two minutes. Um, there, so now you've got your two um, gaskets on the piston ready to go. Uh, and we're going to reattach this now. So, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to add just a little extra lubricant because I've spent so long fiddling with those, getting them on and off, that most of it's now on my hands. Just going to add a tiny bit of extra lubricant just around the gaskets themselves. So, again, don't want tons on here because I don't want it all in my coffee um, and the other place I want some is just on the shaft itself here um, so that when it goes up through the um, the gasket in the top 
uh, it, it should slide fairly well. So again, we don't want loads on here, we don't want it dripping off here, but just give it enough to, to give it a bit of movement. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put that one back in. And you notice there's a hole on the shaft here, which we're obviously gonna have to line up um, with the slot in the piston as it goes in here, like so. That goes back in there, and it can take a little bit of encouragement just to get this back in because of those lips. So again, we're gonna use um, something softish just to kind of encourage it into the actual um, shaft without ending up with a kind of fold happening. You will know if you've ended up with a fold because it won't really work very well. So once you've done that, and if you've done it right, it should just slot in. The second one should go in nice and easily. Give it a little pop, that's it. And then you can see that it's come up here. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to need to do is just make sure that is uh, twisted round to be nice and level. So the easiest way to do that for me, I think, is just to put a screwdriver through and level it out there like that. Okay, so now we are nearly there. We've got one more gasket to add, and I'm probably going to put the lever back on when it's on the machine. Uh, sorry, we've got two more gaskets to add. One more on here and one more on the um, actual shower screen. So we're going to do the same thing with this one, just a tiny bit of lubricant around there. And we're going to put that where it belongs in here. So between the boiler and the group head, um, for, for most of you, um, or for me, between the boiler and the isolator. So we've got all of that in. I'm going to bring our machine back. So I'm going to add it on to the machine at this point. So I'm just going to slot this in here, and we'll need our bolts and our 14 mil spanner just to, uh, sorry, our 10 mil spanner just to attach this on. So apologies about that. That's because we right under an airport, right next to an airport. Uh, okay, so this clicks onto that, and then really what we're looking to do is nice, even um, tightening on, so I'm just going to give it a very loose reattachment first. You don't want to overdo anything. Um, you can see that was turned around a tiny bit. So I'm just going to go to this ever so slightly snug and the other thing I'm going to make sure I've got is that it's level because there is a tiny bit of play in this which if you don't watch um, you end up with a really wonky looking group head so I'm just going to level it in a second um, and then once it's kind of uh, finger tight like that I get down on a level with it just check that group head is sat nice and flat and upright and then I tend to tighten it one side at a time. About the same amount. And you really don't want to over tighten these, you just want it snug. Um, so we over tighten, one of two things will happen. Either we'll strip the threads, which is obviously the worst possible um, outcome, or the tightness will. Um, pull the group head out of line, you'll end up with a wonky group head, and you'll wonder why all these shots are coming out of one side only. If you keep going with this, so alternating sides nice and gently until we hit a point where you're feeling some you know, actual resistance. So let's just hit that point on that side, let's just hit that point on that side as well. So at that point, we're going to double check everything looks as level as it could be, which it does. And then I'm probably just going to pinch it um, tight. So it's kind of already slightly tight. I'm just going to give it a small tweak like that. About the same on the other side. Like that, just to snug it up. Okay, so with that bit done, um, we're just going to add in our roller bearing again. So we've got our roller bearing here, which we're going to slot into place. Um, and then we just need to reattach the lever. Uh, and remember, when we took this off, uh, we talked about the fact that it was really important to have uh, the lever facing the right way. So this is now upside down. And um, what we want is it that way up. So there's a slight slope down towards the front. So that back one should be higher than the front one um, as it goes on. So it's going to sit like this. Uh, and the easiest one I tend to find to attach first uh, is the um, rear one. So. 
I do like to put a little bit of lubricant on the bolts. I don't know if I should or not. Maybe I should have asked somebody of that before making a video. Um, but I like to put a little bit of lubricant on because obviously they're moving all the time. So I think it's worth doing. Uh, but you know, check with somebody before you do that maybe. Uh, so there we go, that's one through. And the other one is just gonna slot through and go through the um, hole in the machine. So you can see here, we're trying to get through there. And this one is a little bit tricky because you've got to get it lined up pretty square, otherwise it won't go all the way through. Um, and you'll kind of know it if it's not going to work because it will feel not quite right uh, and it won't won't go through smoothly. There we are, a little bit of a jiggle when you get that through. So I will add the, the nuts on the end of those, and the screws, sorry, on the end of those um, shortly. But now we should find that the lever goes up and down quite nicely. But the big thing we're missing at this point is shower screen which is still sat out here. So for adding the shower screen you basically need your shower screen, you need your shower screen gasket like that one, um, you will need your porta filter as well. Take our shower screen like this, take our gasket here, give it a small amount of lubricant again um, just to aid in adding it and I think also just to keep the rubber supple as well in case you're not regularly maintaining these. I'm sure you'll thank yourself for it in a few years' time. Um, and then that just slots around the shower screen. Again, if I'm not supposed to put this, this much lubricant on, I'd, I'd, please do tell me. Uh, and then if you're really fussy about lining it up, you can line up your shower screen. Depends if you do lots of mirror shots, I suppose. And then what I'd then do is make sure the lever's up, put that in underneath, and it should just slot in. Um, and if you then take your porta filter, Okay. It should just twist into position like that and that should have seated that inside and then what I tend to do once I've done that like the basket is I then put the basket in and I'll do exactly the same thing put the porta filter in and twist it and that just hopefully seats it where it needs to be. Now the trick the final trick to this is making sure your lever is set up right because if you don't set this lever up right one or two things happen one you won't get as much um, liquid through the shot as you need and number two you might push your um your shower screen back out again every time you use the machine so the trick to this is to use the lower nut to get the right height what you're going to do at this point is you're going to take your um retaining nut and just pop it on the top for a minute you can take this down until the point when you can feel it touch your finger so if you put your finger underneath there and you bring the piston down at some point you'll feel it hit the shower screen from the other side at that point stop take that nut down all the way to the bottom so you now know the point at which it's going to hit the shower screen and then lift it and just tighten it and i tend to go by a whole turn like that and now when you bring it down you shouldn't feel it behind there at all that's it and if you can't feel it that's in the right place just going to double check it's as tight as it needs to be. Let's do that one more time. Yeah, so again, can't feel anything on the back of there, so that tells me that's probably about in the right place. And then we're just going to add our retaining nut. Just hold that in place and just give it a quick tweak. You need about a 14 mil spanner. Like so. Again, you don't want to go too tight for this. Um, you just want it to be firm enough. And just one more check. Yeah, we can't feel anything on the back of that. Uh, once you've got to that point, you're pretty much done. So uh, the only other things really are to do after this, for me, is just to um, add back in these screws for the lever pins um, and all your clips, if you're, still use, if you're using clips on yours. Uh, and then obviously wipe down the outside. And the other thing I would probably do before using it is I would run a couple of um, hot runs through the boiler and through the group head just to kind of wash away any sort of excess bits and pieces that have, um, have got in there during that process. So uh, particularly sort of lubricant and things like that. Um, it is feed safe, but I'm not sure um, you'd really want a cup full of lubricant as your first espresso with your newly serviced machine. So after that point, I can't see, can't see a thing that I'm doing here. There we go. Um, so after you've done that, there we go. It's a fairly easy thing. So hopefully, you can see it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, Servicing the group head on the Lapavoni. Um, 
If you've got any questions, please put them down below. If you've got any comments and things you might suggest and say, do you know what, I wouldn't do it like that or I'd improve that, I'd love to know that as well. Um, and then all I'm doing now is just a very final check to see that group head looks level, which it does. And that's it. That's all done. Thanks for watching.